just want to bless everybody today. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we welcome the Holy Spirit in here today to just hover over us, blow over us, Lord God. The winds of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to stir up and fan the flame of salvation, Lord God, within us that we will see and start to see the manifestation of your glory of the of the kingdom of God within us and through us in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Before we get started, you guys can have a seat. Before we get started, I really do want to say a few things. Um, last week, you all know that we had pastor's appreciation. Uh, I had a I had notes and it was sounding good in my notes and I left it at home. So I'm going to have to wing it here. But uh your pastor was appreciated. The words that were spoken, the things that were said. I want you to know what, you know, the, the, the biggest thing that really just thrills me is that when we come together, especially in that back room, and we can sit and we can chat and we can break bread together and we, and we feel a connection with each other as that we are part of something. You know, that it's not just this individual thing that we are here together working to being a part of something. And then to take that, if we can take that and move it out with us to know that we are some, we are part of the kingdom of God. This is not this is, this, you know, I was thinking about this. You know, I'm getting into a message because I still before I get that, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Liz and I and I believe AC and Sister Williams feel the same way. We really, really Really appreciate you. I've thought about this and I'm like, people don't like change. And as you can see, people don't like change. And there was a big difference from Pastor Carol to Pastor Mark to me. Okay? I understand that and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. And, you know, people have to navigate and do what they have to do. So that's okay. But I can see, hey, I can see that people have been through the fire. But you stuck with me. You've stuck here. You've stayed here. Something about the spirit within you said, this is the place I'm supposed to be, so I'm going to stick it out. I'm not going to jump ship. And I thank you for that. I, 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 I thank you for that. Because I'm not going anywhere, and I'm glad to see that you're not going anywhere either. Amen? Amen? And we're going to see, we're going to see, I, you know, I, I've, I've felt this at times, and, and I'm going to say it again. I just feel like God is is ready to do something big. And sometimes, sometimes, I just wrote this in my notes, sometimes we keep waiting on God. We keep waiting on him to do something. And he's like, I'm just waiting on you to, to be obedient. I'm just waiting on you to do what I say do. You know, to, to believe me and trust that I can do the great and mighty things that you say I can do. I can do the things that you say I can do. Now, do you believe it? We say yes. He says, okay, now go out and do it. And we're like, uh, me? I thought they were supposed to do it. And he's like, no, I want you to go out and touch lives. I want you to go out and manifest my kingdom. I want you to trust me when I, when I say this. I want you to believe. And as you believe, you will see the glory of God. What is the glory of God? The manifestation of who he is through you. Amen. 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 So as I go today, I was telling everybody today, every single time, sometimes it's more intense than others, but every single time I get up here to speak to you guys, I'm nervous. Yes. I am nervous. But that's okay. Hopefully that it means that I'm taking it serious. I'm not ambivalent. As though, you know, I'm some type of super anointed person that can't get it wrong. I want to stay humble before him, listen to his voice. And I'll tell you what, sometimes he tells me to preach on things. I don't think, I don't know, I don't think this is one of them, but he tells me to preach on things. And I'm like, 
they're not going to accept this. And I can't get away from it. I'm not going to say he's like, do it, do it, do it. Some people, God talks to them like that. He doesn't. The, the Lord is funny with me. He, something comes to me and I was like, okay. So I start studying out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to preach on this. And I'm like, mm, that's not good. And I'm like, Lord, you got to have something else. There's something else that can be better. Something else, something more powerful. Something else that's going to move him more. He won't say nothing. And then I go back to what he was talking about, and I start feeling the, feeling the spirit move. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not going to work. And he's like, yeah. he doesn't, he is like, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. This is what I've given you. T- take it or leave it. And I'm trying my best to get out of it. And he's like, you want to, you want my spirit to move with you? There it is. If you want to do your own thing, you have at it, but that's on you. <laughs> Amen. So. <laughs> That, uh, he, he's funny like that, but that's okay. He's not funny like that. He just, he, he's God. Deal with him. We think we can coax him into stuff. We think we can do all that. And he's like, I'm God. And besides me, there is no other. I have asked you say that I am your Lord and Savior, right? That's good. All right. Prove it. Yeah. Do what I tell you to do. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Prove it by doing what, being obedient. Yeah. Amen. So my first question for you today is, what does your tomorrow, and I'm just just talking about Monday, what does your tomorrow look like to you? What does your tomorrow look like to you? And the next question is, as you think about what your tomorrow in your heart for you looks like to you, does it agree with the word of God or not? Right. Remember this. Remember this, everybody. We say a lot of things, but your attitudes and your actions always betray what you truly believe. Always. You can say, I believe such, but your attitudes and actions is going to truly reveal what you believe. If you believe you can walk on water, right? You trust God, believe, and know he gave me the power to walk on water. You're going to walk on water, right? When the time is needed, you're going to walk on water. But if the time is needed for you to walk on water, and you're like, mm, no, your attitude and your actions will reveal what you truly believe. I know that's a big thing. You're like, whoa, wait a minute, walk on, let's do something easier, let, Bring it back a little bit, you know. But it, but it's the same thing. It's exposing. Your attitudes and action expose what you truly believe. That, and I think that's part of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. You know, not only with a reverence towards God, but you're saying, I'm not just going to, I'm not just going to say something. I'm going to live in it. I'm not just going to agree only agree you need to agree i'm not only agree with what the word says but i'm going to act on what the word says right we are going to act on what the word of god says especially if he pricks your heart and i just have a belief that everybody gets their hearts pricked here and there right you get your heart pricked and you're like i need to step out in faith just a little bit more just, just a little bit more. And then, and then we want to say, well, come on, yeah. take a step. Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. You can do this. Yeah. Come on. Come on, people. All right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. So what does your tomorrow look like to you? Is it full of joy? Is it full of hope? Is it full of manifestation of salvation and the glory of God? Is it full of happiness for you, for your kids, for your people, for your country, for your nation, for whatever? I mean, nation, country, community, family, job, whatever. What is what does your future look like to you? Because I'll tell you again, and I said this last week. I can listen. I can read the Bible. And I get full of hope. I can watch TV for about oh maybe an hour and a half. And I think we're all doomed. (laughs) <laughs> you know, all depends on what I'm watching. Now, we were watching the Olympics. That was okay. You know, that was that was all right. You know, Kim, we came home and she likes the Olympics. So 
I hadn't watched any of it, and I was like, okay, that's that's okay. Not good, not bad, or whatever. It's just the Olympics, you know. People running and jumping and doing their thing, you know. It's kind of neat. However, you know, your my outlook based on the Word of God that energizes me, gives me hope. When I interact with people and other saints of God, and they talk about and I hear about the moving of God, the touch of God, the workings of God, the powers of God, it gives me hope. But when I get into myself and I start thinking of the things I'm lacking, I need, what's going to happen in the future, what's going on, da-da-da-da-da, it starts to wane. Why am I telling you this? Because we need to fill ourselves with those things that are building us up. Because there are so many other things that will tear us down. We know that. I mean, there are, there's a lot of stuff in there that wants to take the little hope you have, the little hope you have, even if it's just that I'm going to be okay. I don't know. I'm going to be okay. And it wants to tell you, no, you're not. You're not going to be okay. And you better figure this out before it happens. And the next thing you know, you're running around trying to trying to do. I was talking, you know, I had a good conversation with my daughter here. She came. We had a good conversation. I was telling her about something. Is that, you know, Liz and I, we've we've worked all our lives, you know, we've saved and we put things away, 401k, different investments, blah, blah, blah. Everything's going good. And we had this plan of how everything was going to be all right, and we would just take. We would do our best to live off the Social Security that was coming to us, and then we'll take all the investments we had, and if we ever needed to buy something big, we would just pull out and pay for it, you know. And now we're going to last. We're going to have a nice little retirement. And now they're telling me in 10 years when I'm planning to maybe retire or something like that, that Social Security is going to be gone for 15%, at least 15% of it. And so I started thinking, well, what are we going to do? And then I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to trust God and allow him to do what he's going to do. My focus is going to be on him. I can trust him. I'm not going to have to spend my days trying to figure out what's going to happen 10 years from now. I'm going to spend my days glorifying him and say, what are we going to do now? Amen. So I want my, my I want my future to be filled with hope. I want to see that in me. And I want you to see that in you. It's not another day of drudgery until maybe God will show up. Okay? And I'm not talking about show up in the clouds and take everybody away or what. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, God, okay, I'm waiting for God to show up right now so everything will be all right. I want to take my belief and trust in him that everything will be all right and live in it as a reality, right? And I see my future as productive, as joyous, as happy, as filled with good, as filled with life, as filled with abundance, as filled with excitement. You know, all of that thing. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, my body might hurt, but you know what? My future says I'm going to be running again. If I want to, I can run a marathon. I'm going to see my future like that. I'm not going to make it some kind of positive confession, but I'm going to trust in God and see it like that. I'm not going to see myself crippled, down, beat down, hurting, or anything like that. I'm going to take the word of God and say, wait a minute, I trust in God and I'm going to be healthy, happy, prosperous, uplifting. I'm going to be a joy to others and, they're going to, and I'm going to receive joy from them because I trust in God. Amen. 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 So this is something that I wrote a while back and it was something that I, uh, I read at uh, Pastor Carroll's going, uh, home going celebration. I'm going to read it again. Because remember, we're not ordinary human beings, right? We are children of God. We have been redeemed. Our life has been purchased. Our old life died with him and our new life was purchased by his blood and given to us so we have a new life a new dna in him a new attitude a new set of people 
This is a different circumstance than it was. We don't have to live like the world lives. Only if we choose to live like they do. Only if we choose to react like they do. I understand the old man memory is strong. Okay? I do understand that. Because my old man is, I'm, I'm always trying to dig that hole and put him back in it because he keeps wanting to rise up. I don't think I'm giving him any life. I don't think I'm blowing breath back in life into him again. <sighs> wake up, wake up. But he's always seems to be jumping up in me. Envy, jealousy, anger, you know, frustrations. All these, all these attitudes that the old man had keeps trying to jump on me and I'm constantly trying to tamp him, get back Amen. down there and stay down there. Amen. And the best way to do it is to get in the Word of God, sing some songs, meditate on His Word, and allow the Spirit of God that's in me to start coming up out of me and letting me see the possibilities of God. Amen? So here we go. I see myself in the future. What I am becoming is what I am called to be. I see who and what I really am. So, like Paul, I forget those things that are behind, but I press toward the mark of God's high calling. I'm beginning to apprehend what I have been apprehended for, to move into perfection, becoming the being that I already am, to be Christ-like, a Christian. A Christian is like an alien, basically, a different being, a new creation. One that is totally dedicated to God and his Christ. I see a man whose duality is done. What I mean by that duality, that's that earth and heaven, heaven and earth fighting each other. I, I, the Lord has been dealing with something. I don't have the complete understanding of it yet. But he, but he has been telling me that don't try to get too much away from life on earth. Because I place man on earth. Okay. It's not like we come some spooky, mystical person. No, we're still here. It's just that our attitude is from the true realm of heaven. Amen? Amen? So that's what I mean, you know, the duality is gone. Duality is done. Who is word, thought, and deed become one. What do I mean by that? Word, thought, and deed is that what you think, what you speak, and what you do is singular. It's, ne it's never, it's never, one doesn't oppose the other. Well, okay, let me give you an example. I love the Lord the God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. I love my neighbor as myself. I can't stand you. That's duality. Okay? That's duality. You know, one day, you, one minute you're in love with God and you want to love everybody. The next minute you hate everybody. You still love God, but you don't, uh, Get out of my face. Get away from me because I don't want you around, right? He says, pray for your enemies, okay? That's duality. There's, that, that's the thing. We, 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 we want so bad to follow God completely. But this natural man keeps wanting us to act like every other normal human being does, Right? All right. My eye is becoming single and my whole body is becoming full of light. I am allowing immortality. I am allowing immortality, immortality, and eternity to be my reality. That's when you know you're not running out of time. This is, this is more profound than you're getting, but that's okay. I'm allowing immortality and eternity to be a reality in my thought life, in my understanding. I cannot, I'm not talking about a natural thing. I'm talking about in my understanding of things, I'm not running out of time. Things are, things are not in haste. I don't have to get in haste or anxious or anything like that because I am an immortal being with God. I will always live with him, and it's going to be all right. Then this faint whisper of a life will not draw me down into the depths of despair anymore because I am always thinking in the newness of life. Amen? Y'all yes. should yes, 
I like it. No. Amen. I'm right. It says, I'm no longer anxious or cautious. I'm no longer timid or worried. I'm calm and resolved. That's what immortality and eternity existing within me does for me. I'm no longer anxious. I'm no longer, I'm no longer cautious. I'm no longer timid or worried, but I'm calm and resolved. I hear my father's voice and I do what he tells me to do. I see myself walking in righteousness and peace. Do you see that? Do you see that for yourself? No calamity or other circumstances can move me to the right or to the left. The light of God's word guides me in his paths to green pastures and still waters. By faith in God, I live with calm strength and complete confidence. By God's faith, I live in calm strength and complete confidence. I live not a natural life, but a spiritual one. A life portrayed as Jesus did. The life God the Father designed from the beginning. And I can't get this out of my head. I preached it once. God, when God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and he spoke that, he's going to have a man after his image and after his likeness. And he sent Jesus on the earth and said, my son, this is him, after my image and after my likeness, and I am sending you the Holy Spirit so you can be conformed to his image and likeness. Amen? His word is eternal. It's going to go forth. He designed life in the beginning, and he knows exactly what it's supposed to look like here on earth at this time. It's not like he's saying, oh, no, it's 2024. It's not like it was in the garden, you know, and they all got to get naked and eat vegetables. <laughs> he knows how it's supposed to be lived right now in 2024. where we got jet planes and all this stuff going on, right? And he knows how life should be lived. He knows what he's looking for, and he designed us all to be able to live in that realm. I know I'm cut from the same core and hewn from, or shaped from the same rock as my Lord and Master Jesus Christ. I see who and what I really am and what I was created for and what the Father had in mind before the creation. God is self-existent and eternal. I was created in his image and likeness. Though this body was formed from earth or dirt, identity. Your true identity is not this life on earth. You understand that, right? You understand that? Really? It's not the money you make, the house you live, the car you drive, the people you know, the success, all that stuff. That's not your identity. We identify in those things, but that really that's not your identity. Your identity is in Christ, in God. Amen? Your that's where your identity is. I believe I can experience heaven even while in the body to be transformed, transfigured, changed and completed to live in the light, walk in the light and become one with the light to no longer be in this world without being. I'm no longer, no longer being in this world without being removed from the world. See, that's a key too. I don't operate on the same principles as worldly people do. I operate on heavenly principles and heavenly things. I'm removed from this world. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I no longer exist in this world, but I'm not removed from the world. I hope, I hope that's making sense. We are the places where heaven and earth intersect or meet. We see a glimpse of this reality on the mountain when Jesus was transfigured, where heaven and earth were visible together at the same time. Think about that. On Jesus's, when Jesus went to the Mount of Transfigure and he was changed and the apostles saw Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, that was basically a, a time when heaven opened up visibly to them. And we got to remember, we too are that. We are the place where heaven, where we exist from, and earth, where we are at, where we are, uh, at this time placed at meet we meet heaven and earth meet in us amen I see myself as God sees me a true child of light and a citizen of heaven I see myself living under the authority of King Jesus 
We are his domain. His kingdom is in us. Our character reflects his character. Our character reflects his character. I see this and more. The complete man focused and undisturbed, always moving forward, letting the light shine in my heart more and more to the perfect day. The day I can see, truly see, and become like him. The God man created in his image and likeness. I'm not trying to take away God. I'm just saying that's, he's, he's, he's placed his divine nature within me. So I can be God-like, not in, not in authority of rulership, but God-like in nature and character. Right? This is what I see. Not just for me, but for you, his church. Amen? So I want you guys to see that. Now, having said all that, now let's get into some meat. All right. Okay, let's go to Romans uh, chapter 13, 11 through 14. I want to start in the King James first, and then we're going to move to the Passion Translation. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Knowing, I'm just going to read all four verses and then I'll go over it a little bit. Knowing, and that knowing the time that now is, high time to awake out of sleep. For now, our salvation nearer, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as is as in the day, not in rioting or drunkenness, not in ch- chambering or wantonness, not in strife or envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And what I'm saying, he's saying the day is far spent. A new day is coming. Salvation is nearer than you first believed. I, I read this sometimes. And I'm like, okay, I thought. This is Romans and this is Paul speaking. And I thought I'm like, well, salvation is nearer than when you first believed. And we always think, well, once I believe my salvation is complete. Again, there is an unfolding in this natural realm. Help me, Lord. The more you get, the more you're given. If you neglect what you're given, what you have will be taken from you. Should I say that again? The more you get, the more you'll be given. But if you neglect what you have been given, even it will be taken from you. When God gives you a revelation of his words and says, walk in it, he expects, he wants you to walk in it. Now, he's not punishing it if you don't. It's just that you lose it. It's just like the enemy coming in and taking it from you. You can't even, all of a sudden, the revelation that you had of God's word, the purity of God's word, the joy that he brought you, all that stuff just fades away. And you go right back into the old man again. The old man rises up. The new man takes a nap. He doesn't die. He just takes a nap. Do you lose your salvation? No. But you don't gain a greater salvation. I don't know where that came from, but that's new. All right. So welcome to the new age or the age to come. What do I mean by that? Walking in the spirit 24-7. Not spooky people. (laughs) <laughs> I don't want you to be spooky. I say that all the time. I don't want you to mm-hmm. come let me talk to you. I don't think Jesus was like that. I just Jesus walked around and he looked no he looked like a normal person. Jesus, God himself, walked around the streets of Galilee, Jerusalem, all that looking like a normal person, following the Holy Spirit. Speaking what God told him to speak. Touching who God told him to touch. Teaching the way he was supposed to teach. Amen? 
doing the things. And he says, I want you to do the same things too. I don't want you to be weird and spooky and, and, and put off as if other people say, don't touch me. Ooh, I'm anointed right now. He's like, no, I want you to be open and listening for my spirit. Amen. And when I tell you, go over there and speak to that person. Or something that really might throw you off, he might say, open your mouth right where you are and say, God wants everybody to know who he is. Right in the middle of a place where you are trying to make an impression. I'm trying to say, what? That could be somebody coming up right here, right now. I don't know. That just came up to me. Right here, right now, one of you guys might be in a place where he, he, God is going to tell you, I want you to speak of me in this situation. And you're like, that might make me look a little funny. And it might hurt my chances for what I'm pursuing. But I'm here to tell you, God's telling you, follow me, and you'll get more than what you ever needed. That's right. Amen. Amen. Just, and I'm not telling you to go out there and look for these things. Now, I want you to be sense. I want to be sensitive to the spirit, sensitive to the spirit, so I can I can walk around, I can look quote normal, but not be normal. I can I can look like everybody else, you know, laughing, having a good time, you know, doing what I need to do, but I'm still listening for the. I'm still in tune. With the spirit. And, and if he tells me to do something that is a little uncomfortable, instead of arguing with him for five minutes and all of a sudden the opportunity is gone, I want to say, okay, let's do this. And if I'm embarrassed, it's because of you, so help me out. <laughs> Amen. But we're in the new age. We're in the day of the Lord. We're walking in the spirit 24-7. That's the kingdom life. The day of the Lord. His appearing. His appearing in us. I, again, I'm not talking about the, the, the day when Christ returns and, we, and everything. The rest of, I don't know. I want to say the rest, things are different. I'm not talking about that time. I'm talking about God, God appearing in you. God showing up in you. God working with you, in you, for his purposes, all right? That's what I'm talking about. That day will take care of itself. Jesus said, no one knows except the Father. So, I'm not even going to worry about that time. I'm going to worry, I, I don't want to I don't like worry. I'm going to be, I'm going to be focusing on this time. Amen? What are we doing today, Lord? How how is your kingdom being exposed today? How how what do you want me to do to magnify your name, glorify your name, help my fellow man, do what the things I need to do? That day will take care of itself. Because see, I don't want to see anybody lost. If you want to know the truth, I don't want to see anybody lost. You know, and it might sound funny when I say I'm not looking for God to come back and 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 punish the wicked as people. I do want Him to punish the adversary who deceives the people, but I want to see everybody saved that can be saved, and I'm just going to live in that day right now and let God do what He wants to do in the future whenever He wants to do it. But today, Lord, today, I want to live for You. Amen. We can now live as true children of God and as divine creatures that we were created to be. To love free, to live, to live free of the corruption that exists in the world. To live free of the corruption that exists in the world. We have been delivered to a place where we are given a new nature. Most of us can say, yes, I was different than I am now. There's something... I can no longer do the things that I used to do and be comfortable. I can't. I just can't. 
There's a different nature residing in me. The original nature of the Lord planned from the foundation of the world. That's the nature I can live in. A nature that is divine in origin and substance. We can exchange the ever-changing temporal world to an immortal, unchanging, heavenly world. Amen? Now we're going to read those same verses out of the Passion Translation. Romans 11, Romans uh, chapter 13, 11 through 14. To live like this, and he's talking about the law of love. So to live like this is all the more urgent. For time is running out. He's like, what is he talking about here? Time is running out. And you know it is a strategic hour in human history. Now, why am I? Is because he's talking to people at that time. And he's telling them at that time, time is running out. Time is running out. The day is far spent. Let's get on with it. Right? Okay. I'm, I'm taking way too long. <clears throat> to live like this is all the more urgent for time is running out. And you know it is a strategic hour in human history. I read this a couple of weeks back. And this really um, stuck with me. A strategic hour in human history. And I was thinking about this part today. The, the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God is blowing across the land. But it's not like he never stopped. I think once the Holy Spirit came down at Pentecost, it never stopped blowing. But it's those that get into the flow of it that feel the effects. Okay? Once the Holy Spirit was delivered, he didn't leave and go back up. He is always moving across the land. He is always trying to affect and touch people. He is always moving. And this could be, this could be a strategic hour in human history. I'm going to get into that. And I want to get into that because I don't want to, I don't want you to think that every hour in human history is strategic. But you're in this hour. You're not in that hour. And you're, and you may be in a coming hour, but right now is an hour. And this is the hour you're in. Right. And this is a strategic power in human history. It is time for us to wake up. You believe that it is time for us to wake up for our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. What is full salvation? Full deliverance, complete deliverance, completely set apart pushed away, set aside from the dark realm of the earth and set into the kingdom of his dear son. Each step, as again, each step that we take, each revelation that we begin to walk in, not just grab, not just grab a hold of with our ears, but each revelation we begin to walk in brings that a complete salvation more and more to working within us. Does, you get that? You understand that, right? Okay. It is, it, it, it's so, it, it, I'm finding out, I'm finding out as I study in my, my own inadequacies. Okay, I'll say that. God wants me to give him praises from my lips as a sacrifice. My thoughts are okay. He wants my thoughts to be on him. But sometimes he wants me to give him thanks out loud. OK. Oh, I can sit there and contemplate the goodness of God, the joy of God. And he says, yes, and we commune together. But sometimes he's like, OK, get up off of your behind and praise me. <laughs> All right. Get up off of your behind and tell somebody about me. Get up off of your behind and do something. Do something. Don't be stuck here. You're, you're living in a world that I've placed you in. This is a strategic hour in your human history. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. The day is far spent. The time is coming. Let's just go forward. Okay. Amen. All right. All right. Night. Night's darkness is dissolving away. I, I love that. Because we always think that night is coming. We always think that darkness is about to overtake. No, no. He's saying night Again, what he's given you and you walk in it, you will get more. It's dissolving away. 
allow it to work in you the way it's supposed. Allow the Holy Spirit, which is placed in you, to continually to work in you, which is doing what? He is conforming you to the image and stature of Christ. What is the image of stature of Christ? That's when you can walk like Jesus walked. You can love like Jesus loved. You can know like Jesus knew. You can understand like Jesus understood. You can speak like he did. You can do the things that Jesus did as long as you allow the Holy Spirit within you to conform you. Body, soul, spirit, word, thought, and deed. What we want is we want to take the Holy Spirit and place him on our hip like a 357 Magnum and I will use him whenever I want and then I'll put him back. But that's not it. He's like, let me work in you. I'm going to change you. And as I change you, you will do the things that I've called you to do. Amen. 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 So night is dissolving away as a new day of destiny dawns. See, and that's what I mean. The night is dissolving away. When he's saying it's dissolving, it's dissolving away from those that are walking in light, walking in truth and allowing it to change them. That's when the night, the darkness, the misunderstandings, the confusions, the uncertainty start to fall away. So we must, once and for all, strip away what is done in the shadows of darkness, removing it like filthy clothes, and once and for all, clothe ourselves with the radiance of light as our weapon. Amen? We can see all around us, we can see, and this, is the, this goes with the news, we can see all around us that the world is changing. I mean, do you believe that? If you watch the news, do you believe that? It seems like every country that we read about is in some type of turmoil. You hear it, you see it, it's like, man, you know, as, as though that someone, I, I, I think I might have shared this post, but somebody had a post, um, and they were talking about, more like people, he was talking about red ants and black ants, and they said, you can put red ants and black ants in a jar, and they're fine. Right? They get along. But if you start shaking that jar, the red ants see the black ants as an enemy, and the black ants see the red ants as an enemy, and they start killing each other. Uh -oh. It says the enemy is not the red ant or the black ant, it's the one shaking the jar. That's right. That's right. And I truly believe yeah. that the world is being shaken by something other, trying to get us agitated to hate each other, to fight each other, to find a reason that I can't trust you and you can't trust me, and let's go at it. Yeah, right. Amen? And we just fall right into it. We just, zoom. even me, at times, I might see a post and the old man says, Jaw! and God says, don't do it. Sin, don't do it. <laughs> You're in my kingdom now. You represent me. Is that representing me? Is that representing me when you send that sin and when you push sin? Okay. Okay, I'll 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 just won't do it today. But let them say it again. Amen. Help me, Lord. Mm. But it seems like it, you know how and then and this is another thing that I, I, I believe is true. And it might just be the news that I'm listening to, because there are two things that I have noticed. But they keep saying hostility, and it does seem to be hostility towards the Christian faith and Christians is becoming more acceptable. Yeah. See, it used to be in this country, and probably most of around um, most of the Western world, it was that even if you didn't believe in Christ, you still came a little bit of reverence to God and the Christians, or you know whatever. But now it's nothing to be openly hostile towards the Christian faith. But did that change us at all? It shouldn't. Should we still love those that hate us? Should we still pray for those that stop? Absolutely. Because they are just deceived. We live in the light. We have understanding. They are the ones that deceive. 
Amen. I mean, if we're gonna let if we're gonna let some opinion that we have over some worldly thing that is going on to change us from following, if He is not the center of that decision, the center, if God is not the center of your decisions, your understanding, and your views, then I don't care if it, I don't care I don't even care if your views align with the Bible. If it's not because of God is the center of it, it's it's not right. He has to be the center, right? He has to be the center of what you're doing. He has the center of your one you're following. He's got to be the one. I know there's things going on. I know there's views and things, and we all want to fight, and we all want to have a reason to say, okay, this person's right, and that person's wrong, and blah, blah, blah. And God is saying, none of that is your concern. Your concern is me and what I'm telling you to do. Amen? 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 You have people, so many people trying to, trying to, trying to, Trying to change your opinion. Sometimes I might even try to change your opinion. Don't let me change your opinion. Let God change your opinion. If you got an opinion that's wrong, God will let you know. If you got something going on in your life, God will let you know. If you're sincere about it, He will tell you. And don't fight Him on it. Again, because He might say, You know the truth. I'm not, I'm done. What should, what, what should I think? What should I do? You know the truth. He, for me, boom, sometimes He lays it out. And I'm like, Hmm. Two days later, Lord, what should I do? Nothing. Because I go back to what he said before. There it is. I want him to change his mind. And he won't change his mind. Why won't he change his mind? Because he knows what's right. And I need to change my mind. Okay. <laughs> Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, I don't even know what I'm talking about up here. Yes, I do. Amen. So darkness is going away. Now, here he talks about, he says, um, clothe ourselves with a radiance, a radiance of light as our weapon. The light is a revelation of God. And that is a weapon against the darkness that is trying not to be dissolved. See, the darkness does not want to be dissolved. The darkness wants to stay and keep you in confusion and uncertainty. Anxiousness, fear, those things making you want to, you know, question, even question what you believe and question God and question his goodness and question your neighbor and question so many things. That, that's what darkness wants. It doesn't want to dissolve. But the light as a weapon dissolves the darkness. It fades away and you become more and more in the light of God in the understanding of God, in the ways of God, and you can start walking in that. Amen? Amen. I hope this is good. All right, all right, all right, all right. Praise God. If it's good, I'll keep going. Okay, we must honorably surrender by the... We must live honorably, surrounded by the light as our as this new day, this new day, not in the darkness of drunkenness, debauchery, or not in promiscuity, sensuality, or not being argumentative or jealous of others. Instead, fully immerse ourselves into the Lord Jesus, the anointed one, and don't waste even a moment's thought. Don't waste even a moment's thought on your former identity to awaken its selfish desires. Do you get that? That don't waste even a moment, a moment's thought on your former identity. Not about, it's like don't, don't keep looking back like Lot's wife. Don't keep looking back. Don't keep wondering that if, are you walking the right path? You know you're walking the right path. It's just that you think there might be some security back here or some fun or whatever it is back there. They don't even waste a moment's thought on that former identity because it has the ability to awaken selfish desires back in you. It has the ability as you think on those things, again, yeah. it can just continue to grow in you. It says, so don't even waste the thought on it. Amen? All right. As the kingdom of heaven should not, should, should not become fixated on the things of the earth. We focus on the truth of what our Savior came and died for, to live in the original blueprint of life. Darkness or uncertainty appears to be increasing in the world, but for us, it is fading away. 
See, that's, that's, that's the thing. It may be increasing in the world, but for us, we are coming, we, are, we should be becoming more and more enlightened, less confused, less uncertain, more confident. How do you see your future? Mm. We can see clearly because of light of the salvation of God has, has, has granted us the light of God that he's granted us by his grace. Our conscience becomes clearer and we begin to understand who we are and a new day of living begins. When we begin to understand who we are day by day, greater and greater, more the light shines more and more unto that perfect day. Right? There is an unfolding. I know we, would, we, would see, I know we want it to be boom, boom. And in the spirit, it is boom, boom. But on this earth, as we walk it out, is an unfolding. And he is revealing himself more and more and more to you. So walk in the revelation that he has given you. I'm talking about walk in it, reverence it, joyous, embrace it. The revelation that he's given you, embrace it and watch him and give you more revelation and more revelation and more revelation. A clearer understanding of what you're going to have. So your future, your future, the future you see will look brighter and brighter, not darker and darker. Less uncertainty and more confidence. Am I talking to anybody today? Hallelujah. We have been saved. We have been bought with a price. Jesus Christ came that we could have it all. All right? And then he said, Paul lets us know, as he ascended far above all principalities and powers and spiritual wisdom, sitting in heavenly, in heavenly places. Controller of the universe, right? A lord of the universe. And he says, when he ascended, as long as we identify with him, again, we ascend with him. Now, if we really truly believe that, what can, what can come against me? So either I believe that, my attitudes and actions will reveal that, or I want that, I agree with that, but I think I'm still stuck down here in the muck and the mire of this world, and I must fight the way everybody else fights. I must worry the way everybody else worries. I must do the things that everybody else does because I must be able to make it in this world. And God keeps telling us, you need to forget about that. You need to die to this world. You need to be done with all that stuff. You need to look to me. You need to trust in me. Because as you do this, you will get all, all this stuff that you are waiting for is coming. But you are seeking my kingdom, seeking my righteousness, seeking my holiness, living for me, and you'll see everything that you thought you needed. You'll get that, but you'll even get something greater in return. Amen. 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 Oh, I could go on, y'all. You want me to keep going? You want me to stop? Because it's, it's been an hour. I usually like to stop right now. Okay. <clears throat> the light of truth, the light or truth, the light or truth, revelation is our weapon. Not information to win arguments. Not information to win arguments, but truth to live in and show to the world of darkness, right? Oh, I mean, it's good to have the right arguments. It's, there's some people out there and they can tell you about Christ and give you all the details and, and it's reasonable and it's understanding and I, I applaud them. But that's not me. But I still have a light. And the best light I can have is to live it in front of you. To forgive, to be in joy, to be at peace, to let you know God is there for you. He is not against you. Things like this. Somebody else, if you need somebody to convince you intellectually, I'm not the one. Okay? I'm not the one. Somebody's out there and they'll, they'll speak it to and they want me to convince them intellectually. I'm going to say, I don't have that, but with such as I have, right? Such as I have, I give by you. God loves you. He is for you. He came to die for you. You need to do that. Then to let the revelation of God do what you got, you know. 
Let those that are intellectual and study do what they do. God can use them how they want. But me, my brother here, I'm here to show you love of God. Do you want it or not? And if you don't, peace. I'm out. Amen. Amen. We ought to be completely immersed into the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. By looking back, by looking back, we can awaken the old man. And we don't want to do that. To be full, the fully clothed in the light of the Lord Jesus and his victory over death, we will never be overtaken by darkness. That is that immortality coming out in you. You know, Paul tells Timothy uh, in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4, I was going to read that, but he tells him, and we've read it before, it says, it talks like this. He says this. He says, a person that is enlisted in the in the military, no longer concerns himself with civilian affairs. Right? Do we really get the ramifications of that? He's telling you, you're enlisted into the kingdom of God. You need to no longer concern yourself with the, with the, with the things of this world. You're like, well, how do we do it? We're living here. Because you're transforming this world. That's why I'm saying if we, if, we, if we continue to think that we have to live like the worldly people, fight like the worldly people, contend like the worldly people, do the things like worldly people do, we will all good. I mean, we talk about wealth, health, prosperity, that is in the kingdom of God. But then we also know there are plenty of people with plenty of money that have no, that have no desire to know God. So it ain't just that, you know, success. But it ain't just that. That's part of God, but it ain't just that. There's more to it. I mean, there's more to it. And so we, we're wanting God. I mean, so Timothy tells him, no longer and a person in, I, I, a per, I'm trying to get this in myself, okay? A person in the military no longer concerns himself with civilian affairs. A person in the kingdom of God no longer concerns himself with the things of the world. How many things of the world am I concerned with? Too much. Too much. How can I give up these concerns to him and focus in on him? And allow him to take care of all that mess. See, that's where rest is. See, that's where the rest of God is, isn't it? That is the rest of God, is when you actually do get out of your own labors. Allow him to do what he's going to do. Your rest, your trust, your everything you work for is in him to trust him. All you do, all your labor and everything is to trust him. That is your, to trust him. My fight, my Everything that I do, everything I want, my biggest fight is the fight to trust him. And if I can fight that good fight of faith to trust him, he will take care of all this other stuff that I've been so concerned about, so concerned about. What am I going to do? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He is God and besides him, there is no other. I do want to put this in because we talk about a streets of time in human history. I want to read Acts chapter 17, verses 26 and 27 in a passion. And I might just read it up here. Acts 17, verses 26 and 27. God, be, God began by making one man, and from him he made all the different people who live everywhere in the world. He, des he decided exactly when and where they would live. God wanted people to look for him, and perhaps in searching all, for, all around for him, they would find him, but he is not far from any of us. Now, why am I saying that? This strategic, God said thing. We, we think God's not in control, and this is telling you, hey, I put one on our earth, I made all these people. I set up where they were going to live, where you're going to live, and, and the time, the age, the day you're going to live in. I set it up. And why did I set it up? Because I want people to search for me. Right? We have found him. 
So what do we do? We are those lights leading people to God. That is your mandate. I have set this thing up. I put the people on the earth. I decided where they're going to live. I decided what time they're going to live in. And now I want people to look for me. Can you work with me on that? Amen. He's in. We think he's. We don't. We don't. We, we think he's. We we say he's in control, but sometimes we wonder and we think we need to control. I seen this. I seen this meme today, and there was a guy that had a mop. And he was mopping the ocean. And it says, this is you trying to control situation. <laughs> it's futile. Amen. <clears throat> you know, and this is one thing I do with it. Sometimes we as Christians, we keep looking for this great mystical boom. Chop. And sometimes it's the little things that expose the bigger things. That are seeds to the bigger things. We look for these things, and sometimes it's the everyday grace. The everyday grace. What is grace? That God's goodness, but God's power for you to live the way He wants you to live. And it's the everyday grace of God working in your life that produces even the spectacular stuff. If you don't allow the everyday grace to work, how in the world are you going to allow the spectacular grace to work? We want to set aside the everyday grace and wait for the big grace and just sit there and wait. The big thing is coming, but live today in the grace of God. Amen? All right, this is all making sense, all coming together? All right. So God wants us to live a passionate life. We read this last week, Romans 12. Uh, verses 11 and 12. <clears throat> this in a passion. Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion toward him boiling hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. <laughs> Feel you as excitement as you serve him. No, we want him to fill us as excitement as he serves us. I mean, you know, let's just be honest. We get excited when he does things for us. We're not so excited when we do things for him. That's work. But it says, but this hair is, go back to that other one. But it says, Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. You, you, don't, you don't look at your service to him as a drudgery. You look at your service to him as a privilege that you are, work, that you are, that you are being obedient to a holy God that when he gets the glory, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. When he gets the glory, you get to share in the glory. That, that, that's the best thing about it is as I'm serving him and doing what he wants and he gets glorified, I get to share in it. I'm not seeking for glory. I just get to share in the glory. And so I, I, I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you that you, you know, I get to share in your glory. But I'm giving, I'm giving you my glory. I'm casting my crown to you. You know, I'm giving you my glory, but I get to share in it. I, that is not something that I pursue. I just get to share in it. All right. Okay, as you serve him, let this hope, go ahead, go on back. I mean, go to the next one. Let this hope burst forth within you, releasing a continual joy. Don't give up in a time of trouble, but commune, it God, commune with God at all times. Amen? Amen? Amen. So I'll leave that with you. What does your, what does your future look like to you? Let the Word of God and the Holy Spirit instill in you a future that is blessed, a future that is full of hope, a future where darkness has faded away, light has come, and you know with confidence that God has His best in store for you. Amen? That's the whole message in a nutshell. I've been talking for an hour and a half. All right. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Stand on your feet, everybody. I'm glad you put up with me for these last few minutes.